What if a single company could basically change the game for crypto overnight? Today, we're diving into a wild what-if scenario and exploring the incredible shockwaves it would send through the markets, through governance, and through the very idea of decentralization itself. All right, just imagine this for a second. You wake up, grab your coffee, check your phone, and bam! There's this headline that sends an absolute jolt through the entire crypto space. It sounds like something out of a movie, until you realize it's very, very real. You know, markets would just go haywire, pundits would be scrambling, and anyone and everyone holding ETH would have just one question on their mind. What on earth happens now? Well, that's exactly what we're going to unpack today. We're going to explore what it would mean if a company, let's call them BMNR, actually pulled off a move this big. So to really get a grip on this, we've got to follow the shockwaves. We'll kick things off with just how massive this scenario is. Then we'll see how it completely flips the market on its head, creates a whole new kind of power, sparks a huge debate on decentralization, and even causes this massive institutional shift. And of course, we'll wrap up with what it all means for the shareholders. First things first, let's really try to understand the scale here, because this isn't just about buying a bunch of tokens. A move like this is like dropping a new planet into the Ethereum ecosystem. It creates its own gravity. 5%. Now that might not sound like a huge number, right? But trust me, in a decentralized network like Ethereum, that number is absolutely massive. It changes everything. And to get why, you first have to remember what Ethereum actually is. See, owning 5% of Ethereum isn't like having a big bag of coins. It's owning a piece of the fundamental plumbing for this new digital world. We're talking about the engine for DeFi, the settlement layer for stablecoins, the rails for NFTs, and so much more. It's like owning 5% of the real estate in a city that's about to become the next global capital. It is foundational. And right there, that's the key shift. Our company, BMNR, would go from just being another player in the market to being a systemic force that actually is the market. They're no longer just using the network. They're a part of its core structure. So, what's the first thing that happens? The market rules get thrown out the window. And that brings us to section two, where we're going to talk about the pure economics of scarcity. This really lays it out perfectly. Before BMNR, you've got a pretty normal market, right? Supply moves around freely. But after, BMNR just vacuums up 5% of the entire supply and takes it completely off the table. Suddenly, the market has this structural tightness. Think of it like a highway going from five lanes down to two. Any little surge in traffic or demand is going to cause a massive jam, or in this case, a massive price spike. And for BMIR's investors, this is the holy grail, asymmetric upside. It basically means the potential to make a ton of money is way, way bigger than the potential to lose it. The supply is so constrained that any little bit of positive news acts like a rocket booster for the price. So BMNR's own balance sheet becomes this incredible tool. By just sitting on all that ETH, they are creating the very scarcity that drives its value up. It's a powerful feedback loop. What's good for Ethereum is suddenly fantastic for their stock price. But okay, it's not just about the price going up. This move creates a whole new kind of power. And that brings us to section three, staking and soft governance. So as you probably know, staking is what keeps Ethereum running. It secures the network, and with a 5% stake, BMNR is suddenly one of the biggest security guards on the block. We're not talking about controlling the network, but about being a fundamental pillar supporting it, and, you know, getting paid very, very well for it. For the company, this is incredible. That giant pile of ETH isn't just a static asset on the books. It's an active, income-generating machine. We're talking predictable, recurring revenue from staking. And that opens the door to all sorts of new business lines, offering staking as a service, creating financial products, the whole nine yards. This also gives BMNR a massive voice. Now in Ethereum, it's not like you get formal votes. It's all about soft governance. Your influence comes from your reputation, how much you contribute, and your sheer size as a validator. By holding 5%, BMNR automatically gets a seat at the table where the future of the protocol is decided. And for investors, that's priceless. It means BMNR isn't just reacting to changes in the ecosystem, they're in the room, helping to shape those changes. They get a peek into the future, and that's a strategic advantage you just can't buy. Okay, but let's be real. A move this huge would set off a massive debate, maybe the biggest one in crypto, decentralization. Is this company a responsible steward or a corporate tyrant in the making? Let's dive into that in section four. So here it is. The big question, does one company owning 5% of ETH completely destroy the whole point of decentralization? It's the first thing people would scream, and you know what? It's a totally valid concern. 
So on one hand, the fear is obvious. One company has way too much control. But the reality is a little more nuanced. First, the protocol itself is designed to prevent anyone from taking over. But maybe more importantly, BMNR is a publicly traded company. They're a known entity, accountable to shareholders and regulators. That's a lot different than some anonymous whale. You could even argue that having a professional, transparent steward could actually make the network more stable. This really sums it up perfectly. A transparent, corporate whale is less threatening than an anonymous one. It's about knowing who you're dealing with. The devil you know is better than the one you don't. But the impact here doesn't stop at the crypto community. Oh no, a move of this magnitude sends tremors through the entire global financial world. Suddenly, regulators, governments, and every other big institution are paying very close attention. Which brings us to Section 5, the Great Institutional Shift. Yeah, owning 5% of ETH is basically painting a giant target on your back for regulators. But think about it. This could actually be a good thing. If BMNR gets ahead of it, works with regulators, and builds a rock-solid compliance framework, they don't just solve a problem, they build a competitive moat. They become the gold standard. And this is where the real fun begins. It's like an institutional domino effect. BMNR makes the first, bold move. Their competitors see this and start getting serious FOMO. That sparks more demand, which hits that already tight supply, pushing prices up, which then attracts even more institutions. It's a powerful flywheel, and BMNR is the one who kicked it into motion. So we've gone through all the ripple effects, but let's bring it all home. What is the ultimate payoff for the shareholders who decided to bet on this bold strategy? Let's get to our final section. The payoff is nothing short of a total transformation. BMNR goes from being just another crypto infrastructure company to something much bigger, a digital asset reserve institution. The market stops valuing them just on their profits and starts valuing them on their massive reserves. They're no longer just a participant, they're a foundational owner. They don't just play in the ecosystem, they are a core part of it. And this creates an amazing upward spiral for investors. Their main asset appreciates, the staking revenue keeps rolling in and gets bigger as the token value grows, and their strong financial position makes it easy to raise more money for new ideas. That ETH on their balance sheet becomes a compounding strategic asset, a true engine for growth. And really, this is the thesis right here. The future of finance is being built on these networks. And the companies that are going to win big are the ones who are brave enough to get in early and position themselves not just as users, but as owners and builders of that future. So I'll leave you with this question. Is this whole scenario just a fun hypothetical? Or is this the actual blueprint for how a smart company wins in the 21st century? The answer to that could change everything. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.